Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first episode of the Hafey Digital Podcast. My name is Ryan Hafey with Hafey Digital, and let's get into it. Well, it's happening. It's finally here. It's all come full circle. I'm a, I, I want to take some time today to obviously give a little bit of an introduction as to what this podcast is all about. What's the purpose? Uh, what's the goal? Where we, you know, who's it for? Is it for you? And then I uh, want to talk a little bit today about the live stream setup that we have here. That's that's kind of the main topic. We're going to go over camera setup. We're going to go over live stream settings, OBS audio, all the stuff that you need to know to accomplish this type of live stream setup. If there's anyone watching right now, uh, it'd be awesome if uh, a couple of you can chime in and let me know how everything's looking and sounding. I've done a couple tests, so I think I'm pretty prepared for this, but uh, it'd be nice to get a little bit of feedback. So um, let's start with a little bit of backstory. So back in 2007, uh, I just graduated college. I studied in marketing. I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do with a marketing major. Um, and when I graduated, it was right around the time when social media was becoming popular. Facebook, you know, was, I think Facebook at that time was still only open to college students. If not, it had just transitioned to where everyone could, could uh, uh, sign up. Um, got out of college and was interested in how companies were starting to use social media. Podcasting was also becoming uh, a thing or you know, gaining some popularity at that time as well. Uh, one of the first things that I did when I graduated in 2007 was move out to Las Vegas. And shortly after that, um, I started a podcast. It was one of the first sort of one of my, it was my introduction into kind of content creation. Before that, I wasn't really doing a whole lot of anything, to be honest. So, and the, um, the topic of the podcast that I started and I'm not going to get too much into it because it's one of those kind of internet archives that uh, I'd rather sort of keep buried in the past. But yeah, you know, at the time graduating college, fresh out of college, I had no money. Um, I had a very entry level marketing job that didn't pay a whole lot of the bills. So, uh, I started a podcast about, um, saving and or making money. I figured if I could start a podcast where I'm teaching myself how to learn things as far as, you know, in, in, in the realm of finance, that I could be helping myself, but also helping others who might be in the same situation as me. So I did that for a little while. I want to say maybe six months or so. It wasn't too incredibly long, but um, had some fun with it. From there, I kind of moved on and got into other things. I did web design for a little bit, picked up photography that from there transitioned into video. And now here I am kind of full circle, uh, which would be what uh, going on 12 years, 11 years later. And uh, here I am doing another podcast. So it's kind of cool that uh, that it came around to where we're at now. Obviously, it's a little bit different this time. I've got some uh, video uh, aspects to it. But uh, yeah, we're here, and this is um, this is kind of the new project that I'm gonna take on for a little while and just kind of see how it goes. So we'll segue into what's what's this all about? What's the podcast about? What's the purpose? What's the goal? So really, first and foremost, I mean, the podcast is for me. If I'm if I'm being completely honest, uh, it's it's an opportunity for me to uh, get a little bit more comfortable on camera, get a little bit more comfortable talking to a camera. I guess it's something that. I just never really felt like I was that great at. Uh, so I want to get a little bit better at that. Um, but I also want to use it as an opportunity to do two things, and that's educate and grow. And that's both ways. I want to use this as an opportunity to do some experimentation, you know, uh, play with some uh, different techniques and things in sort of, sort of the video and photography space. Um, you know, this is what the setup looks like now. This is what the picture looks like. This is how my audio sounds. This is what my background looks like now. But the goal is to hopefully um, fine tune this and grow it and morph it and change it over time. Uh, and in the process of doing so, learn something myself, but also um, share that with everyone who cares to listen. So if you are into photography, if you're into live streaming, if you're into um, video production, editing, all that kind of stuff, 
this may be a place for you. Um, I don't necessarily foresee there being a a consistent upload schedule at this point in time. It's quite possible there could be. Um, Sundays, I guess, are probably the best day of the week for me. Um, but we'll see. It all. It's really going to depend on availability. It's going to depend on my schedule and everything like that. You know, I've got a day job. I've got three kids. So it's going to revolve around that a little bit. But I plan, the goal is to do it probably around once a week. And in each episode, I want to at least cover one helpful topic, if not more, depending on what the topics are. And then the goal is after the podcast is done, I will take that final footage and chop it up into little bite-sized bits, depending on what we talked about. Just kind of like if you're, if you're a Joe Rogan podcast fan, you may know how he uploads bunches of clips, little smaller clips from each of his podcast episodes. Uh, so I want to be able to do that. If you don't want to listen to an entire 30 or so minute podcast, Hopefully there's a five to 10 minute chunk within that, that you may be interested in, whether it has to do with cameras or gear or live streaming, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the goal, by the way, um, I will be, uh, answering questions and chatting live with people, anyone who's watching. So if you have any, uh, if you have any questions and you're on the video, leave a comment and uh, let's chat. But with that out of the way. Um, what I wanted to do today, the topic of today's podcast is uh, live streaming, which I think is kind of fitting. This very first podcast is uh, live streamed, as will all the future podcasts be. Um, and then once this podcast is done, grab the audio, throw it up, and you can subscribe on iTunes and Spotify, I believe. Basically, anywhere you can subscribe to podcasts, we'll be putting the uh, the audio up after, in case you prefer the audio version of it. So, Let's jump right into the setup. Let's talk about exactly what it takes to achieve this look and this live stream and all of that. So uh, where do we want to start? Let's start with the camera. So right now, obviously, you can't see what I'm looking at, but this is the I'm shooting on the Sony a6500. On it, I have a Rokinon 12 millimeter uh, cine lens. So this is all manual focus, which I actually kind of prefer. I've got a lot going on in my background here. I don't want too much interference. I don't want the autofocus to be changing around, which, yeah, technically you can use an autofocus lens and just change it to manual. And I have some G Master lenses, which might look a little bit better. But on this crop sensor camera, I've got a crop sensor lens. It works great. It's got the nice field of view that I like. So that's what I'm using. And these Sony cameras, I enjoy for this purpose only because you know, they like some others out there, obviously, but these have a clean HDMI output. Um, and in my experience with doing some uh, minimal live streams, but they, the, the output, it stays up forever. You, you don't have to hit it. As long as you're not recording on the camera, your, your camera's not overheating. You're not any generating any extra heat. The clean HDMI feed is consistent. It looks clean and it works. So, uh, I'll probably be sticking with this setup for a little while. From the Sony, I have it running into uh, what I'm pointing at right now, which is just a little 5-inch Fuel World 4K video monitor. Uh, it's not an external recorder, but it essentially is um, just kind of there so I can check framing and make sure the exposure looks good and all that. So I've got an HDMI cable running from the Sony into the... Um, the, uh, the, uh, the why am I blanking on this? Uh, right into the field monitor there. And then there's an HDMI output on the field monitor. From that, I am running into a capture card. The capture card that I'm using is the CamLink 4K. Um, this little thing has worked out great for me. Um, it's I think it's about 130 bucks right now on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description after this. And literally just plug it in, plug the camera into that via HDMI, and then that cam link plugs into your computer via USB. I even went as far as live streaming a, uh, a boxing event that lasted about two and a half hours, maybe a month ago or so, using the cam link and a Sony camera, and the stream stayed up for the entire duration of the show. So it was, um, I, I've had no issues with it. I quite enjoy it now. It is just a small little USB um, capture card. It's it's got a USB on one end. It's 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 a tiny little thing. It's not like a switcher board, um, and it will only handle one input. 
uh, but it works great. I think eventually what I want to do is um, upgrade to the ATEM Mini, which if any of you have followed some of the recent YouTube videos and announcements that have gone out, uh, Blackmagic came out with a $300 ATEM Mini switching board, which is a fantastic deal, assuming that it does what it's supposed to do. Um, I've purchased for clients before that wanted to do some online streaming and things like that and use multiple cameras. I purchased some of those big black magic switcher boards and those things can be upwards of two to three thousand dollars. So for them to be able to uh, deliver something for live streamers um, that's at the that that kind of price point at 300 bucks that's pretty impressive. So um, yeah, I want to try that. So for right now, though, I've only got the one capture card, which means that I only have one camera input. Technically, I could go out and get uh, another cam link um, and uh, add a second camera input. But again, if I end up getting the A10 Mini, I won't need it because you can drive up to, I believe, four inputs into that switcher board. So anyway, all right, so we've got camera done. We've got capture card taken care of. Um, real quickly, we'll talk about lighting and audio. So here I've got a Audio-Technica AT2035, I believe. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason as to why I chose this particular microphone other than the fact that it seemed to have pretty decent reviews um, from what I've seen, and uh, it's pretty inexpensive. I think this one was m about 130 bucks 125 something like that so it's not too bad they've actually got the at 2020 version as well which i think is closer to a hundred dollars and i've uh i've worked with those a little bit as well and those sound pretty good also and this microphone is running into a audio interface over here which you can see it is the behringer euphoria umc 202 hd and Behringer makes a number of different versions of this particular audio interface, um, depending on the, with different inputs and some with different features. These are actually quite inexpensive audio interfaces. Um, I want to say this one was probably again, I actually I think it was a sub sub one hundred dollars, um, probably in like the $60, 70 eighty dollar range if I remember correctly. This one is two inputs. Um, and it's an, uh, it's got two XLR inputs, uh, so I've got one of them taken up right now. And um, the signal that comes in is relatively clean. It's not going to be top-notch, but hopefully, as you can possibly hear uh, from me talking, that it, it sounds pretty good. So, And that goes directly into the computer via USB. Um, as for lighting, I... I went a little overboard with my lighting situation, I think, for given the setup that I have. So I've got the Godox SL60W, which is kind of that cheap version, cheaper version of the Aperture 120Ds that everyone loves. Um, this one, though, I think only costs right now. Last I saw, actually, and it might have been like a Black Friday thing, but it was, it was on sale for about 115 bucks. Uh, I bought it when it was about $134. Um, still... A fantastic value this currently is at 30% uh, power I believe and um, I think that I've got my aperture wide open but I'm only at like ISO 200 on the camera so 30% power and still being able to keep the ISOs down that low this one is not the battery version I think the battery version is a little bit uh, more expensive but for my purposes something that plugs right in is all I need and I'm happy with that on the Godox, um, I have a it looks. I think, think it's a 36 inch softbox, and I didn't always use this setup. 36 inches. I mean, for again, for this area, it takes up. This is my arms <sighs> extending to both sides of the softbox, so it's a big softbox. But it the the light that it gives off is awesome. The light is so soft. Um, before using this one, I used a Falcon Eyes, and I don't, I don't know what you call it. It's a, the brand was Falcon Eyes, and it's just kind of like a pancake light, uh, pancake LED light. Um, so you've probably seen LED light panels before, the square panels with the uh, little LED diodes in there, and then they might come with some kind of diffusion plate over those. Um, this one's a little bit different in that uh, it, it right out of the light, it's it's all diffused light, and it is relatively soft given the kind of light that it is. Um, but the problem 
is that because the light is not spread out, it's more concentrated to an area about like this, anything that goes in front of it will cast a shadow. So right now I've got this microphone here on a boom arm, but because this softbox, the area of this softbox is so big, there's no discernible shadows being cast. The problem with the Falcon eyes, you know, like I said, I had a, um, a shotgun mic for the longest time I was using a shotgun mic. Um, and I really had to be careful with how I positioned myself because, uh, if the shotgun mic was anywhere in this area here, I'd get a shadow on my face. Plus with this kind of setup, having to turn to the computer like this every now and then turn back to the camera, it wasn't ideal to have a, uh, shotgun mic anyway, which is part of the reason why I switched to a microphone setup such as this because if I want to I can turn and look at the camera and then if I want to go over here and look at my desktop I can do that and not worry about the audio changing all too much so All right, so that's audio that's lighting um, And then let's talk about OBS. So I'm actually going to go over and bring OBS onto this screen here and um, one of the cool things I've been learning a lot more about OBS in the last few weeks, been playing with it a ton. And um, one of my favorite features of OBS is the hotkeys. So one of the things that I can do is hit a button. <laughs> well, that didn't quite work exactly as I wanted to. Um, but uh, right now, you're basically, you're seeing my screen on OBS. And the reason that it looks like this is because you're getting the inception mode uh, right now. But uh, let me see if I can fix this here. If I take myself off. Oh, wrong button. See, see, I'm just getting into it. Uh, it's it's going to be a learning process for me. So this is this is just showing my screen. So we're going to just have to work with this a little bit. Maybe if I kind of shrink it down, it won't be as crazy. There we go. I think that works. Everybody see that up there? I hope so. So yeah, you can set up hotkeys. So if I want to go back to camera one, uh, I've set it up so that if I hit the number one on the number pad here, it shows this angle. If I hit number three, it's going to show that intro that I had earlier. But we don't need that right now. If I hit zero, I just said it's going to turn off my microphone, which it did. Uh, let's see what else we got. Again, we got screen with me in the corner. If we go to number five, it takes me off the screen there. Um, and that's, I think, about all the hotkeys that I have set up for now. Uh, I think eventually one of the goals is to, if we have different segments in the show, to set up different animations um, and be able to play those as uh, as we go. Um, so let's go back here and show the desktop again and kind of spread this out a little bit. Again, hopefully your eyes aren't going too crazy with how this looks here. Um, but uh, so over here are all my scenes over here are the two sources uh, in this well at least for this scene we've got a couple sources there um, and uh, you can see my mic input here if I were to play this introduction again it goes into a different source and you can see my intro audio so a lot of functionality all built into OBS so if you're not familiar with OBS and you want to do some live streaming it's free download it play with it it's, it's a it's a really cool program um, but while we're here, let's talk a little bit about some of the settings that I'm using to get this live stream up. So if we go into our settings here, and there I may be limited to what I can show you depending on, um, you know, what it'll let me show you while I'm in the middle of the stream. But if we go down to the video tab here, uh, I've got my base canvas set up at 4K and my output resolution also set to 4k and that's because i am outputting from my camera in 4k and i have obs set up to record um to my computer in 4k uh, but i set some different settings to make sure that i can output to youtube in 1080 so if i'm right the youtube live stream should be at a, a max resolution of 1080 Technically, I could go 4K if I wanted to, um, but uh, doing so is going to require a much higher bit rate and it's going to put more strain on my computer. And most of you, I assume, would probably be watching on uh, your mobile phone anyway and probably don't care a whole lot about crazy high resolution uh, if you're watching a live stream. So um, that's why I did that. Uh, over here in audio, not a ton, I guess, to really show here. Uh, just got my different audio devices uh, enabled there. 
output is where things get interesting. So if you go to output, this is where you can kind of set your settings as far as streaming and recording go. So on this first tab, I have the streaming tab open here. Um, and what you can do when you, if you go back, so for example, let me just kind of point this out here. So on the streaming tab, I've got my encoder set here to X264, um, which basically means that this is encoding through my CPU. If I go over to recording here, I've got my encoder set to NVIDIA NVENC, um, which uh, from my understanding means that it's, it's encoding through my graphics card. You could technically stream and record through your CPU if you wanted to and if you had a, a strong CPU, but I mean, if you have the option to split up all the work between your CPU and your graphics card, why wouldn't you, right? That way you're not overloading one or the other. So for streaming, I decided to go with my CPU. I set a, a bit rate of 7,500, probably a little bit fast for what I need here, but I figured I'd have give myself a little bit more versus having not enough. I think YouTube for a um, 1080p stream recommends uh, around 6,000 to 6,500, if I'm not mistaken. Stand by, need a drink of water. Okay, so um, keyframe interval, I still, to be honest, don't quite understand exactly what keyframe interval means or is, but from everything that I've seen, keyframe interval should be set at two in most cases. And most of these other settings, um, I didn't touch. I did, um, for the streaming, again, I hit rescale output here and entered a uh, 1080p resolution, 1920 by 1080. And again, the purpose of that was to downscale the 4K resolution to 1080 for the purposes of streaming to YouTube, if that makes sense. Uh, and then we go over here into the recording tab. And uh, so what I've done here, I'm using the advanced output mode. If you change it to simple, obviously, as you can imagine, you would get some more simple options. But uh, when you set it to advanced, these are the options that you are given. Up here, you want to choose your recording path. I've set mine uh, to a folder on my desktop. Recording format. So I, I looked into this quite a bit. Um, there are a number of different recording formats that you can record into when you're using OBS. Um, I have decided to stick with the default, which is MKV. Um, and I find that uh, it's the most reliable. For example, if you were to switch to an MP4 format, you could technically record in that, but it gives you this warning that basically says if for whatever reason OBS crashes, um, you're going to lose your your file. And I guess MKV in this case is more reliable, whatever. Now, MKV is not a super recognizable file format to most uh, and may not play back on your system, but OBS has a setting where you can do what's called remuxing the MKV files. I had never heard that term before, before I started getting into OBS. Um, but uh, basically what happens is you record, and when you're done recording, you can open this little window. And let's see here, I'll do it real quick. You go to File, Remux Recordings, and here you literally drag the recording or the file, the MKV file into here, hit Remux, and within a second it creates a high quality mp4 file for you um, that's has all the the quality settings that you set for it it's a small file um, even you know i've done tests for anywhere from five to ten minutes and the mp4 file that comes out of that is you know maybe a, a, a couple hundred megabytes max um, but just looking at it the quality of the file looks really good so i'm sticking with that so let's get back into the settings here a little bit Make this a little bigger here. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the output. We'll go back to the recording tab here. So yeah, so that's MKV files. Audio track, we'll get to that here in a second because there's some interesting stuff that you can do um, with selecting your audio tracks. You notice you have the ability to do that on the streaming tab as well. Uh, so again, like I said, encoder, I have the recording encoder set to run through my graphics card just so I can kind of split up some of that workload and if you look here on OBS you can actually see um, how how everything's going so right at the bottom here and I, I know my resolution is pretty high so I don't know how easy this is to see 
but it says dropped frames. Currently, I have zero dropped frames. That's a good thing. You don't want to drop frames. If you drop frames, then you're, everything gets kind of glitchy. Um, so zero dropped frames is excellent. Um, you've got your CPU usage or CPU usage here, which right now is sitting in only like seven percent, which is fantastic. Um, and then your kilobytes per second, kind of your your streaming bitrate, basically right there. Back into the output window here. Um, I have set my recording bitrate. So there's there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a big difference between your streaming bitrate and your recording bitrate. Streaming, you're just sending the file to YouTube or whatever streaming service you end up using. Uh, for recording, you you want to record, especially if you plan to repurpose any of that footage, you want to be recording at a very high bitrate. And from what I've learned, you can actually go in and, and look and find out what bitrate your camera uses to record the different resolutions when, when you're recording video. So, you know, for example, if you're recording at 4K 24P, which is what I'm doing here, you're going to have um, a certain bit rate compared to, say, recording at 1080 at 30 frames a second. Uh, I have my bit rate for this set to 50,000 kilobytes per second. I don't recall exactly how I got to that number. Again, I think I just searched what's the bit rate of uh, Sony A6500 at 4K 24 frames per second and uh, got a range for that. So that's the number that I popped in there. And I've done plenty of recording tests and they all look fantastic. So that's working for me. Again, keyframe interval here, setting that to two. Presets, profiles, all this stuff. I don't believe I touched any of that. So there's that. So uh, the interesting thing, let's go back to this uh, audio track information here. And let me see if I remember exactly what I did. Yes, okay. So here um, in the audio mixer, you can go in and determine uh, which input is set to which track. Um, and then you can go back into settings and audio or settings. And then between streaming and recording, you can assign the streaming, say, to audio one and recording, say, to audio two or whatever track you want to assign it to. And the benefit of doing that is that for example, when live streaming, um, YouTube has a audio bit rate of, a, I believe, of 128 uh, max versus when you're recording, you can set it to, I think the max on this, in this case, is 320. Um, yeah, so audio bit rate, I have track one set to 128, and this is my streaming audio track here. And then track two, I have set to the max of 320, which is what I'm recording to. And the reason why you want to do that is because, yeah, you could set your streaming audio bitrate to 320, but then you're just using extra juice that you don't need. You know what I mean? If you can only output at a max of 128 uh, uh, bitrate, then you're just wasting energy, right? So you can split those two up, in other words, to make sure that you're not over, you know, using excess juice out of your system here. Uh, let's see, let's go through and figure out what else there is that might be worth discussing. Let's go to hotkey. So as I mentioned in the beginning or earlier, um, one of the cool things about OBS is you can set up hotkeys. So you can essentially turn your keyboard or any sort of, you know, switcher board that you might have that's customizable into a customizable switchboard. So um, you can go through here and depending on all the inputs you have, it lists them here. Whenever you add new sources, it will put them in and, and uh, give you the opportunity to go in and select things. So let's say if media source, if I wanted to make zero uh, be what mutes my media source, hit zero, and then there it is. And that's, that's what it, oh, yeah, now I got to, delete that if I want to get rid of it but this is super handy I know that it's going to take me a while to get used to my hotkeys which by the way I have on my other monitor which you can't see here I've got a list of my different OBS hotkeys here so this is what I'm working with now uh, yeah let's bring this back over off here 
Hotkeys, advanced, what's in here? Not a whole lot that uh, is really worth discussing. Stream, this um, is where you will put your live stream data and uh, your server, your stream key, depending on which service you're streaming to. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's how you live stream from, uh, from, your, from your home office or studio. All right, I'm gonna get this out of here. Perfect. Okay, so let's bring me back to the main camera here. Let's see, did it work? Yeah, it did. All right. Perfect. Cool. So that's it. That's the live stream setup. Let's uh, let's check and see if we got any comments. Hey, we did. Uh, we got a comment. Funny story. This is from Active Boys FC. Funny story. I was gonna pay fifty dollars for a workshop in Brooklyn on podcasting. This makes up for it. Awesome. Well, I hope you're getting some valuable information out of this. Um, and the the goal is after this is done, uh, like I said, I'm going to take the video from the portion where I'm talking about all the live streaming stuff, but I'm going to film some B-roll. I'll film, you know, what the cam link looks like. I'll film my, my uh, camera setup and the monitor and all that kind of stuff. And we'll make that into its own separate video that you can come back and take a look at later on. Um, so yeah, and, uh, that's, uh, cool. That's awesome. I hope, uh, I hope you got some, uh, some value out of this and that's the whole goal, man. Just, uh, get better, grow, experiment, tinker. That's what I love to do. I've, I've kind of realized over the years that, you know, as much as I like creating, I think I spend even more time just tinkering with things and playing with things and trying to get different results out of the stuff that I have. Um, none of this I had any idea how to do a number of years ago, but now here I am, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And uh, I think that's probably a good note to end on for this first episode. Hope I wasn't too awkward on camera here. Um, and again, let's uh, let's plan on doing this again next week. How about? Um, but uh, for those of you who have tuned in, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much, and we will see you and talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.